Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining today. This is your host Nino and if we shall keep matters short, today's video concerns the impossibility to presently install FreeDOS with its own FDisk disk partitioner on 86 box as of the present build 4.21 and my previous build which I own 4.11 cannot do it either. I have submitted already this error report to 86box and I hope that the issue will be fixed swiftly. I mean it is an emulator of excellent reputation so I'm sure this is just a little deviation. The long version follows now. A hopeful begin of an installation <laughs> which once again ends like the Titanic. So, enjoy if in the mood and otherwise know what not to try. Maybe Camus will fare better, but that we shall explore in a future video. The will of the people, ladies and gentlemen, has always been of utmost importance and this channel treats its viewers with respect. And DJ Briscoe remarked on one of my previous videos that it would be nice if I could show how FreeDOS is getting installed and to keep things, you know, simple. So here I am at the FreeDOS.org website ready to grab the media or to suggest to you which media to grab because guess what, I got it already. And we shall be going here for the legacy CD for the older hardware. As you can see, that's actually a zip file in the lowest line on the screen. And when you unpackage the zip file after download, you're going to get here also a boot floppy image. So this is the media we need. And now we shall proceed towards installing it. Now a couple of remarks need to be made before we really plunge into things. I understood that DJ Briscoe does not particularly like Camu. I mean, fine. <laughs> we all have preferences and it is true that Camu did become quite complex over, last, the, over the last like 10, 12 years, something like that. Uh, that is of course due to the 1 million variants in systems and hardware that exist and that somehow may be of importance and that Camu needed to somehow handle and that just made its command line longer and longer and despite my sincere efforts to show you always everything significant I do, it still may be looking a bit intimidating. So for this video I shall try to stick to the 86 box emulator which is a known virtual machine emulator for older 86 class hardware and which is fully graphical. Nonetheless, we are working here first in a virtual machine performing a virtual installation on a virtual hard disk and everything, right? And putting this on pause and you will need to put the results of this virtual adventure onto your physical disk. That means flashing the image. There's, that is a step which is operating system dependent. On Linux that's terribly easy. On Mac OS I would regard it as easy too. I would estimate, I have never done so, I hope there's no authorization getting in the way. And on Windows there are enough image writers. Though Windows doesn't actually have such equipment as Linux does have from nature on to do so. In particular, it does not let you simply dump things onto device files, right? If I'm wrong and there's a way to do that nowadays with onboard tools, yes, please correct me. So that you will still need to figure out despite whatever I will be showing you here. And what we maybe first should look at are the settings to see what machine we're going to be emulating. So a 386 speed 40 megahertz Acrosser, like this Apo version here. 8 megabyte, yeah, time synchronization enabled, but that doesn't really matter. So that is the system you will be running it, you will be running. With what floppy and CD drives? I gave it two floppy drives just for good measure. Maybe this one I should 
turn into a 1.2 megabyte drive right so two floppy drives and of different types so we can read no matter what images we come across as a cd-rom drive i propose an atapi drive and as hard disk now things get a little more interesting in the bios there is a hard disk with a type 45 this is both 45 on the pocket 386 and in the bios of this specific virtual system it has 917 heads uh, cylinders so 917 cylinders, 15 heads and 17 sectors. The size is 114 megabyte. In other words, yes, the largest fragment of your card will thus remain unused. You may experiment with other values and other types. I'm just telling you fairly that I'm going to stick to a known BIOS type in order to be able to replicate the exact same conditions in the virtual machine and in the real hardware. Because sometimes compact flash cards suggest to be having different geometries depending on who reads them given that they actually have no geometry at all. You can imagine disk geometry as expressing the number 100 for instance as 4 times 25, 5 times 20, 2 times 50 and so on and so forth. So all of these result in a 100 but if you do not have the right geometry then your system might be bootable only in the emulator, not in the real world. So that is the peril if you do not stick to a known disk type. There's a somewhat larger disk, uh, two somewhat larger disks, one at 127 megabytes and one at 152 megabytes, but I picked this somewhat smaller one. The size difference isn't that large, and I actually hope that this would fit on a 128 megabyte compact flash card should you perhaps wish to acquire a second card for your Pocket 386. So enough of this, these are the settings. Uh, Alt, and how did I move this? Do I right click and move? Yeah, maybe, maybe, let's, let's hope. Uh -huh. can, I move, can I move it further up? Wonder whether there is okay b button visible. Okay, it's not visible and there's nothing I can do about it. Okay, big deal need to change my screen resolution, but you get it. Save those settings. All right, now, as you have created such a new hard disk, it will be full of zeros. It's time, as we have specified the media to insert the media. I have already inserted it, but I'll just show you what it looks like. So you pick the FD13 boot image on Friday the 13th and hope that all these 13s are bringing you luck. The CD-ROM should not be empty. Let's put in it Fredos Legacy ISO. Okay, and now let's just also let's Let's play, let's reset it, yes, reset, and then let's play, play, press delete, pressing delete here. You're going into the standard CMOS setup, and as I have done here, with page up and page down, you can change here the disk types. So you see 46 is the bigger disk, I went for 45, then press escape, and then go with the arrows to save exit, uh, save and exit, and then you should be having a machine believing to have the correct geometry we wish and which should be able to boot from a floppy image. So, here we are seeing this geometry recognized as well. And we are seeing FreeDOS slowly booting. Slowly, because <laughs> as opposed to Camu, 86 box is accurate with the speed. And things are just not faster than they have to be. Now it is probing its CD drivers, and I expect it to succeed. Yeah, there we have it. And what does it look like? 
Oh, it ended processing its config sys and equivalent of autoexec bat, the fd auto bat file. So soon we should be able to perform our FreeDOS installation. The interesting thing is I believe that the Pocket 386 is the ideal system for FreeDOS, more so than the original book 8088 because FreeDOS is simply a fatter system, offering you more functionality, but therefore also taking up more space. What is my preferred language? I shall stick with English. Enter. Yeah, I know, it is a complete operating system. Yes, enter. Now, let's say, yes, partition drive C. Yes, please reboot now. My computer should now reboot. Believe it or not, it does. I don't understand why this is happening. We're having here illegal partition table, drive 0, sector 0. In reality, it should have recognized its drive. The BIOS recognizes the drive. Right here, it is writing primary master. So attempting to use a CD driver, this is all going to work. But the interesting part will actually be, does it recognize the hard drive? Now comes the moment of truth, we are through with the processing of the configsys and fd auto bat file, the fd configsys one. And we shall soon know are we in luck or are we out of luck? And when we are out of luck, I will be trying another drive geometry, hoping that, hoping that that may have been the issue. And if that doesn't work, then maybe we have to resort to manual handling of the situation. What is my preferred language? English? Yeah, I want to proceed. Continue with the installation. Yeah. See, it failed. It should have now recognized the partitions. And as we saw the weird window before, it may very well not have been able to partition. So, I'm going to close now 86 box, and I'm going to investigate that. See you in a moment. Ladies and gentlemen, the situation became just a lot more interesting after I tried a lot of media and virtual machines. And in particular, it becomes very clear that there is a bug in 86 box, which simply prevents the F disk element, which is responsible for partitioning the hard disk of FreeDOS, to actually do anything. And you easily may see that when you look carefully, that it tells you that the hard disk has not been detected. And actually I, well, we're waiting, might as well tell you, already filed an error report regarding that to the 86 box people so that they hopefully fix it. 
but essentially I am having here again my a crosser machine I might as well show you briefly yeah with i386 the hard disk is again our 1917 15 17 hard disk right everything is as it should be the medium is now the first floppy disk of a free dos floppy install but it does not matter which one you pick because the error seems to appear always and the irony is that while you cannot install FreeDOS via 86 box, you can totally install the closed source Microsoft DOS 6.22. It's FreeDOS works just fine. Yeah, I just want that it boots sufficiently so you can maybe see the error. nearly there nearly there yeah now do I want to do this dangerous overwriting thing absolutely I do I press enter it enters the phase of automatic partitioning and then fails and that is visible here in the lower right corner of the free DOS install Yeah, once it happens. Here, automatically partitioning drive C. So this is actually the F disk phase. The disk is there, it is completely readable, it has all permissions properly set. It was in fact created by 86 box here you have it no fixed disks present so this is why it fails and where it fails so it cannot partition your disks and I tried several variants of machines like I don't know certainly like a dozen I tried a he failed you see that so this this really kills it okay I can actually close that I can show you something else If we now go to this disk we were so interested in, the one we created, the one we intended to use, etc, etc. If we open it with a hex editor, then we see nothing. In other words, it's just a field of zeros, begin to end with not a single byte having been written by FreeDOS. In other words, <laughs> the only way I could suggest to install FreeDOS now onto this virtual image will be over Camu. It still might be nice that we created that raw image through 86 box, so we have an image of the precisely proper size of 917 cylinders, 15 heads and 17 sectors, but we will not be able to continue the installation in here. So, today's video ends in failure, but hopefully it has been an educational and interesting failure. So, thank you for joining. Be aware of this limitation of 86 box that you cannot install with it FreeDOS as of the present moment. And let us go onward to further adventures. I'm very sure 86 box will be very swiftly fixed by its very intelligent community so certainly we will be able to replicate that experiment with more success and a better install in the future but until then we will have to resort to Kemu and the lowly details of the command line such horrors however you can expect in the next video to which i hope to greet you here soon again if not a subscriber yet i hope you might consider joining this friendly community and so with this, I kindly thank you for watching, wish you a wonderful time, see you soon, and goodbye. Post Dictum. 
the bagger file has been closed as not an 86 box bug but a Fridos bug and what this developer kindly elucidated regarding Fridos is a little disconcerting because he states that Fridos is relying upon functionality that in such old BIOSes is not present. But at the same time, 86box is trying to emulate a real world machines here. And so it might mean, but you judge whether this is indeed the case, that there might be some real world machines onto which FreeDOS will not install. So I wanted to make a note of this here, should you run into any difficulties installing it.